Hi everyone, I am Prabha Mohandas who recently completed my PhD under the guidance of Professor Radha Krishna G. Pillai in IIT Madras. Today I am going to talk concepts on structural repair for pre-stressed concrete. This is the outline of module on concepts of structural repair. We have seen introduction to concepts of structural repair and strengthening of beams, columns and walls, joints. In this lecture, we are going to look at strengthening of pre stressed concrete to enhance its performance. Deterioration of pre stressed concrete systems is often difficult to identify and repair. Most of the time, these structures will not reveal its true condition until the failure becomes so evident. So, in this lecture, we are going to look at different types of strengthening methods available to enhance the performance of pre stressed concrete systems. So, we all know pre stressed concrete systems are being used predominantly across the globe especially in the construction of bridges. Here in the left, the pie chart shows percentage of, pre percentage of bridges constructed using different types of systems. This was the survey conducted by German Federal Highway System comprising of about 40,000 bridges. Among this, we can see almost 70 percentage of pre bridges are made using pre-stressed concrete. The number is significant and the right side you can see the bar chart where it shows the percentage of pretension concrete bridges constructed per year over the past 5 decades. This was reported by New Zealand Transportation Authority. You can see uh, in the late 1960s, the construction of pretension concrete bridges has increased significantly. Almost 60 to 100 number of bridges are being constructed per year. Again, it shows the number is huge and uh, it requires attention for such structures. Strengthening of bridges becomes more and more important due to the existing of bridges that are facing aging and were constructed using old codes. And we are seeing a lot of traffic volume increased over the past decades and expecting to increase even more in the coming future. So many of these pre-stressed concrete bridges are new and are expected to serve for 100 plus design service life. However, we are facing such pre-stressed concrete structures losing its structural performance due to loading or environmental conditions. Hence, it is important to know the strategies to repair or strengthen such structures to meet its design demand. 100 numbers of pretension concrete beams exhibiting shear cracks due to poor. The image here shows the pre-stressed concrete bridge in India, which is located in prime cities of uh, India, experiencing shear cracks at the ends of the girders. Almost all the girders at the ends have such shear cracks all along the length of the highway bridge. So, this indicates 100 numbers of pretension concrete beams along the length of the bridge experiencing such shear cracks. This could be due to poor design that adapted while constructing or the poor construction materials used are due to improper coral provision. When such member experiencing shear cracks, then the pre-stress level would be significantly reduced thus the shear capacity. So, it is important to identify the sources or the, it is important to identify the sources for the damage, whether it is good due to loading condition or the aggressive environment or this is due to inadequate design or the poor construction materials used. Here is one such hazardous scenarios for pre-stressing steel in typical box girder bridge provided in FIB bulletin 33. So, it shows how, how water can get in to the pre-stressing strands due to different parts or the sources. So, based on the conditions, it was divided into two categories. One is the failure of external barriers where you can see the uh, water can get in due to defective wearing courses on the surface. On the surface or the missing or defecting waterproof membrane here or due to the, the defective damage drainage intakes or the pipes that was placed to drain out the water and sometimes uh, the wrongly placed outlets could lead to moisture ingress and the joints at the ends or between members are crucial for water ingress. For example, Le leakage in the expansion joints or the leakage in the construction joints would lead to water ingress and the insets where water again get in. And another important 
factor is that concrete cover which was supposed to protect the tendon or the steel inside. If that is defective then it is easy for moisture to reach the steel surface. Then the second category is that failure of tendon corrosion protection systems. So here again we can see the outlets placed for placing the grouting. So if it is partially or fully op open then that could lead to moisture increase and then the ducts where we place the tendons and the surrounding concrete or the grout voids. These are the primary sources for moisture to reach the strand surface and eventually to corrode the steel. These are some real life examples where we can see such scenarios. So here in this case in anchorages between the expansion joints are covered with the poor mortar. So you can see the region here, the con mortar quality which is used to fill the joint was not good and you can see the cracks over it. So that will lead to the path for moisture to get in and to reach the strand surface. And here is another example where the vertical drains which was supposed to drain out the water surface is not placed properly and hence the water flown over the concrete surface and leading to damage or deterioration on the region. So apart from that let me see, let me look at what are the types of damages that we can see in pre stressed concrete systems. The one most common damage is that concrete spalling when the member, con when the concrete strength is not adequate enough to take the stress or we will see the concrete spalling or when the bridge is experiencing sudden impact load we could see the concrete spalling and here are the batches where you can see concrete has spalled and if the concrete has spalled then it is evident that the strand will be exposed and in some cases where the member is corroding we can see we can see rusted strands also but the corroded pre stressing strands itself has different stages where first we will have a even surface with no pitting corrosion. So in that case the capacity of the member will be around 240 kilo Newton here it is mentioned in kips about 60 kips and with increasing corrosion level the pitting has slowly formed and the surface of the strand becomes slightly uneven and the load carrying capacity was slightly reduced and with further increase in corrosion level the pitting has uh, severe and with further increase in corrosion level we could see highly uneven surface on the strand where the capacity of the strand has reduced significantly. So with increasing level of corrosion further it leads to partial or complete loss of strand area. When the member is experiencing huge load or when it is experiencing sudden impact load then we could see strand rupture failure and in most common we will have this structural cracking due to inadequate shear or flexural performance or inadequate fatigue performance of the member. Having seen or having assessed this damage in the pre-stressed concrete systems, we have three possible scenarios to repair the capacity of the member. The first scenario is that the ta to achieve the target capacity. When I say target capacity, it means the capac design capacity of the member before it got damaged. So the first scenario is to meet the target capacity, in that case repair is considered successful. So after repair the capacity of the member is equivalent to the capacity of the member or the undamaged member. And the second scenario is that the target capacity is not achieved but still the member can be strengthened to enhance the performance of the structure. That is here in this case after strengthening or after repair the capacity of the member is not met to the design capacity of the member before its damage but still we can increase the capacity of the member adequate enough to meet its purpose. The third case is where we have the members are severely damaged so in that case we cannot even enhance the performance just to meet the purpose so in that case it we need to replace the member to meet the conditions so here the target capacity is not achieved and the behavior of the member cannot be improved due to sorry the behavior of the member cannot be improved by repairing. So in that case we have to replace the member. Having all those let us see what are the 
typical methods to enhance the performance of pre-stressed concrete systems. The first and most commonly used method is external steel post tensioning and the second method is post tension CFRP. CFRP is carbon fiber reinforced polymer and the third one is near surface mounted CFRP where CFRP is placed but not pre-stressed. And the fourth method is splice tendons, splice methods if the tendons are broken or if the tendon is damaged then we can repair those things using splice method and another method is steel jacketing and which is commonly used in RC or re conventional reinforced concrete systems also and if the member is severely damaged then none of these methods will work then we have to go with complete replacement of the member. So, before selecting the methods there are certain selection criteria that we have to look and based on that we can choose the repair method for enhancing the performance. And these are the damage assessment factors that we have to consider while selecting repair methods whether we are going to increase the capacity to meet the overloading or demand or the fatigue performance. And if the tendons or the stands got captured or damaged in the existing member whether we need to splice or combine the strands and if so how many strands have to be spliced and is there any pre stress loss if there is a loss how much pre load is required or the concrete condi condition of the concrete how much it has to be restored or it has to be enhanced and speed of the repair. Apart from these things above all these three are the primary factors that is that we have to give consideration how speed that we can do the repair of the existing member that is basically the interruption of the service while repairing that has to be as minimum as possible and the next category is the durability and cost. In repair philosophy it is meant that if the structure is repaired then it has to meet its service life beyond its intended design service life. So, the repaired me me members should have high durability to serve its design service life. So, let us get into the case 1 that is external post tensioning. Here is the case of strengthening of 48 years old parking garage using external post tensioning. So, I am not going to get into details of this method as this was elaborately covered in the previous lectures. So, here is the case. So, I will just get into briefly explain the scenario here. The girder of the parking carriage was deteriorated due to aging and the loading conditions. So, external pre-stressing strands were placed outside and it was stressed at both ends to, to enhance the capacity of the flexural capacity of the member. Once it is stressed, once the stressing applications all done, this region was covered using a concrete so that the externally placed tendons can be protected. So, the most common and preferred method is that flexural strengthening using CFRP that is carbon fiber reinforced polymer strips because the carbon fiber reinforced polymer strips has high stiffness and strength to enhance the flexural capacity or the required performance of the member. This CFRP strips are highly orthotropic in nature. So, the stiffness and strength is in higher magnitude in one direction than the other this due to its high strength and stiffness it becomes a good alternative for pre-stressing purpose. However, the CFRP strips has certain challenges for gripping and pre-stressing. So, we have commercially available components for the effective pre-stressing CFRP system. So, these are the four components first one is the carbo stress pre-stress CFRP and the second one is jacking and anchor in movable frame and live end anchors how the anchoring is there at live end and stresses system. So, let us look at the first component carbo, carbo stress pre stress CFRP. So, when CFRP comes it comes with the so in this region so it comes with the potted anchorages that is called stress heads. which basically uh, helps us to anchor that region using steel
steel clamps or anchors and this will be fixed to the concrete surface. So, usually this end where it is attached to the slab or the remember surrounding it, it is called fixed end or dead end. Whereas, the other end where the stressing will be applied is called jacking end and that end the strips in this end is inserted or placed in the movable steel frame. So, we this uh, basically the CFRP strips comes with stress heads. So, this end is clamped or anchored at the region. The capacity of the anchorage would be around 300 kilo Newton and we can apply maximum of about 240 kilo Newton depending on the need structural need for strengthening. Basically the member in this region governs the required pre stress level. That is the strength of the member at that region determines how much pre stress has to be applied for strengthening purpose. And this image shows the live end anchors once the strips are placed and anchored at the live end. And here shows the clear image of how it was done for a bridge decks. So, where you can see a steel frame and the CFRP strips are placed inside and clamped it for stressing. And these are the stress head system which helps us to apply the required pre stress and uh, basically for gripping and stressing. So, you can see the uh, wedges are anchorages for gripping and locking the stress and here is the hydraulic jack which will help us to apply the required pre stressing force. So, this image right here shows the assemblage of this stress head system at the live end for stressing application. So, these are the components that help us to pre stress the CFRP system for enhancing the structural performance of the member. Next case that we are going to see is for near surface mount CFRP system. So, for that we let, let us consider a case where the bridge member experiencing sudden impact failure. So, when member expect experience such sudden impact failure, it is obvious that this concrete is going to get fall off. So, here you can see the intensity of the damage and the concrete's fall. So, once the concrete has fall, the stands will be get exposed and in some case depending on the load, if it is huge, then the stand in that region get ruptured. So, let us see how that is going to affect the performance. So, when we have such vehicle impact or corrosion damage, so the member go significantly lose his pre stressing level. Here you can see the red mark, the right to the red mark where you can see the ruptured strands and rusted steel. The left to the red mark you can see the bright steel. So, when the member has such stand failure or reduction in capacity, it does not represent the scenario of the whole length of the girder. It is very localized. In that case, we need to account the other region where the strands are in good condition and embedded in, in a good concrete. So, th this leads to a question that if, so in general in pretension concrete systems, stress will be transferred from strand to the concrete. So, if the stand is ruptured or damaged in this region, the stress transfer mechanism will be failed. But here in this region, the st stands are in good condition and embedded in concrete. If that is the case, then can the pre stress force be redeveloped over the transfer length of the stand? If so, then we need to account that pre stressing level available in this region to determine the capacity of the member. 
So, for any strengthening methods, first we have to evaluate the condition and the capacity of the member by doing the analysis. So, in that analysis, we need to account this redevelopment also if it is occurring. So, before getting into that, let me explain about the transfer mechanism along the length of the member. As I said earlier, in pretension concrete systems, we have stress transfer from stand to the concrete. So, when the stress is getting transferred, it get transferred from the end of the member and it gradually increases to along the length and reaches the effective pre-stress. The length required to reach the effective pre-stress is called uh, transmission or transfer length and further under service, the effective pre-stress will be developed to reach the ultimate, pre ultimate stress and the length required to reach the ultimate stress is called development length. Basically, the length of this region alone is called bond length and together the length of transmission or transfer length and the bond length is called development length which is the length required to reach the ultimate stress from 0. So, this transfer mechanism is significantly depends on the bond at interface. Hence, this will be affected if the interface is getting damaged or disturbed due to the external loading or due to aggressive environments in case of corrosion. So, for example, uh, if you are assuming that the member is experiencing corrosion or near the damage, this bond interface get affected. So, in such cases, to transfer the effective pre-stress, we may need a longer or the member will need a longer transmission length. So, in that case, the transmission length will get moved from this region to that region. So, if, if it is a pre-stress or if it is a corrosion damage, then the pre-stress level will also get reduced due to loss of stance. This is a simple hypothesis for this transfer mechanism what happens if it is affected by corrosion or any bone damages at the interface. So, just to have an idea what is the bond mechanism in pre-stressed concrete systems with 7 wire strands, this shows the schematic of the strand surface. The bond mechanism in pre-stressed concrete systems were contributed by adhesion and friction and mechanical interlock. Adhesion is due to the lubricant presence of lubricant on the surface which plays a minor role when the strand gets slipped then the effect of adhesion will be lost and friction and mechanical interlock plays a huge role in transferring the or for a bonding action. So, friction is mainly contributed by the higher effect I am not getting detail about this and the confinement of the surrounding concrete. And mechanical interlock is basically due to the shape of the strand here you can here you can see how the, the cross section of the strand in concrete. So, in the gap between the strand and concrete it forms the concrete keys. This concrete keys plays a major role in providing a confined interface. So, as I said if the interface gets damaged or if the strand is experiencing corrosion this cross section is going to get affect and that is going to affect the bond between the strand and concrete. So, it is important to know the bond strength between the strand and concrete while performing or while evaluating the capacity of the member. So, how do we determine the bond strength of pretension concrete systems? Here is the experimental setup that we developed here in IIT Madras to determine the bond strength for especially pretension concrete systems. We have such uh, long members of about 1 meter accounting the transmission length or the transfer length from both ends of the member. So, we do a simple pull out test and to measure the bond stress slip behavior to obtain the bond stress, bond strength of the member. So, here we measure the bond stress and slip behavior to determine the bond strength of pre-stressed concrete systems. Now, let us see assessing the transfer or development length of pre-stressing strands on the existing system. People have proved that we can measure the transmission length or the pre-stress can be redeveloped along the length of the member in the undamaged portion of the damaged structure. So, here to determine the transmission length what we have to do is we need to select the cut location at fractions of distance 
and then we place the strain gauge to the good quality or the undamaged strand and measure the stress or strain acting on it. Here, here in this case, acoustic emission sensors were placed to determine the stress. So, by measuring or by monitoring the stress on acting on the surface. So, based on this we can easily determine the transmission length based on the concept. Transmission length is the length required to attain the effective pre-stress. Effective pre-stress can be obtained by the sensors that we placed on the existing surface. So, from the observed results we had seen that the transmission length of the existing member is large if it is due to the sudden impact load comparing to the gradual failure. That means, sudden impact failure could result in longer transmission length or redevelopment length comparing to the gradual failure. And this is a sequence of repair, how we are going to strengthen the member in case of impact damage using CFRP strips. Basically, this is near mount surface CFRP strips. First is that to fix the damages of strands, the exposed strands. If the strands got ruptured, then we need to do the strand splicing. I will explain in the following slides how to do the strand splicing. And once the strand splicing is done, if there is, the we need to apply the pre-stress to meet the required level. And this region has to be covered or patchwork has to be done by placing the concrete. And once that is done, then the member is strengthened or confined using CFRP wrap. Once the CFRP wrapping is done, so here, here we have done a use cut, I repeat. Here you can see U wrapping strengthening has been provided to improve the performance. So, once that is done, protective coating on the CFRP surface has to be provided to enhance the durability of the repair. And finally, this is how the structure looks before and after repair. Before repair, you can see the concrete pole and the strand damage everything here and here it looks like neat completely strengthened structure. So, let us look at repair and replacement of tendons. So, here we have four cases. The first case is to just replace the damaged tendons and the second case you can uh, place the new tendons to the existing one and splice it at intervals or a splice and retention at breaks. And the third method is splice at break and retention all together splicing has to be done at the intervals and all together we can retention. And then third me fourth method is complete replacement of tendons. If the tendons is severely damaged that we cannot repair by splicing. So now it is important when we uh, select a when we do a repair for tendons it is very important to find out the location where we need to repair or where we need to do the strengthening or cut work. Let us look at the repair and replacement of tendons. So, we have four cases for repairing tendons. The first one is to replace the damaged tendons and the second one is to splice and retention at breaks and the third one is like splice at breaks and all together we can retention at anchorages and the final one is to complete replacement of tendons if possible in the case where the strands are severely damaged. For replacing tendons, it is foremost important to select the location of repair and here it, the schematic shows the profile of cable in the pre-stressing systems where you can see the high points at the supporting region, support region and the low points at the mid span of the member and the preferred location would be somewhere in between where you can have enough concrete cover. for repairing if there is any need for cutting and also it matches with contra flexure of the member where moment is 0. Hence, it is always preferred to select the location where tendon passes through the middle of the slab or beams for the repair work. So, it is most important to determine the, so when we repair the tendons, it is important to detention the 
stress available in the tendons. If the strands are ruptured or cut, then there is no work has to be done. If the tendon has to be strength repaired, it is important to detension the available pre stress acting on the strand. If the strands are ruptured or cut, then there will not be any pre stressing force acting on it, then we can directly go get into the repair pro process. If the strands are not completely ruptured or still there is some residual pre stressing force available in the strands, then we need to detension the pre stress force before repair or strengthening sorry before splicing the strands. What are the different ways of detensioning strands? So, we have three ways here one is the first one is through anchorages and the second one is by drilling into the strand and third one is burning through strand. So, here is the case of the first one where we can use this anchors at the ends and then slowly detension the strands and sometimes we can use some special jacking arrangement where such can such jack systems can be placed at the ends. So, this is for a member which has a accessible length. The both ends can be gripped by jack grippers and the middle of the regions we can cut the strands and slowly it will release and the this region will take care of gradual release of pre-stressing pre -stressing or detensioning the strand. And the second method is like drilling into the strands where we have to drill directly into the strand and in this case the location of concrete sorry the location of strand has to be known before we start the process or the exact location has to be known for drilling into the concrete. And the third method is that exposing the strands or the anchorages to the heat by allowing heat the pre stress can be reduced. Detensioning of pre stressing involves high risk as we are dealing with a huge amount of forces. In, in this case the stra strands or tendons can pop out or the concrete surrounding concrete can blown out. So, it is important to ensure people are not sur surrounded by that to avoid any injuries. So, let us get into the splicing method using couplers. So, as I said earlier, the first method is to replace the tendons completely if damaged tendons completely if possible. So, that is the case when the concrete is not, pla not placed and when you identify the damage in the strand. Suppose in this case where you have seen, where you can see the concrete in place of the beam and the tendons are embedded and then this is the place where concrete is not placed and tendons can be easily accessible. Now, when you identify the damage when the concrete has placed, here in this region you can see kink in the strand. So, if that is the case, splicing helps us to repair the tendons. So, let us see how to splice the tendons. First, I mentioned we have to select a proper location where we have sufficient uh, concrete cover to access and it should be like not in the middle or end of the member. So, where we have moment 0 or the contraflexure is there. So, for proper gripping for proper gripping of coupler we are placing this P pipe with a sufficient inside diameter and length to grip the coupler which will be placed inside the PE pipe and we have to select the length in such a way that it allows the movement while stressing. So, roughly that has to be about 1.5 times of the expected elongation and then we have this pocket former to be placed at the ends and we need to ensure there is, there is no voids by providing pre stress tendon coatings. Once this is all fixed, you can see here uh, where the part of existing tendons is inside the coupler and here is the part of new tendon that has to be spliced with the existing one.
and this shows the image of uh, the coupler arrangement where you can see an anchorages, wedges and spring just to allow the movement and threaded rod and the coupler for connecting the old and the new strands. This image here shows the couplers placed to join the old or the existing tendons with the new tendons. This work is for a slab work where the tendons are spliced using couplers and stressed to meet its required performance. Now, another method for stressing the strands is that the intermediate stressing using intermediate stressing anchors for slab repair. So, this is being followed or used when we cannot access the end anchorages, but still we need to stress the strands at the intermediate. So, here in this region, so we have uh, excavated the concrete over it, the, the size of the excavation depends on the stressing equipment that we use or the type of anchorages that we use. So, here is the case you can see dog bone system has been arrangement has been placed to provide stressing tile for intermediate stressing anchors. While detensioning the strands for repairing, the length of the strands will get shortened, but for this intermediate stressing anchors, we need to have a stressing tiles to provide stressing. Since the existing tendons will not have sufficient length, new tendons has to be spliced to increase the length such that that will provide a tail for intermediate stressing anchors. So, here is an arrangement how the old tendon has been, uh, old tendon was embedded in a concrete and the dog bone system was placed to enhance the length of the tendons for intermediate stressing anchors. So, once this is done, then we can here write, uh, write image shows how the strands was stressed at the intermediate using hydraulic jack. So, by doing so, we can restore the pre-stress level in the member and here is the summary. So, so far we have seen the scenarios and damages observed in pre-stressed concrete systems and the repair methods to enhance the performance of pre-stressed concrete systems using external post tensioning and CFRP wrapping in that using post tensioning CFRP wrapping and near surface mount CFRP wrappings and splicing of tendons and these are the references for further readings.